get started. Yeah. All right. Uh, welcome everyone to the uh, Jenkins Docs Office Hours, the European edition. This is, uh, today is the 20th of October, 2022. Um, today, it looks like uh, myself and Bruno are here for uh, attendees, but if people come and filter in, uh, we'll be sure to add them in. Uh, small agenda today, we had some action items, uh, DevOps World 2022 update, uh, the next LTS that will be coming out in a few weeks. Uh, we have our uh, weekly release on Monday or Tuesday. Um, yesterday we had a security plugin security release as well. Uh, and then just dedicating some time to Hacktoberfest since it's in full swing and we've got tons of work coming in. So uh, very exciting. And um, yeah, Bruno, do you have anything else you'd wanna add to the agenda today? I'm afraid I don't have anything else. Thanks for asking. Yeah, of course. And uh, yeah, it's okay. No one has to have anything, I promise. Uh, so anyway, so action items. Um, I know that there's one for Mark that he hasn't been able to action on since he's not here. We're just going to skip that one for now. Um, he'll be able to address it when he comes back. Um, in the meantime, we've had the Google Summer of Code pro uh, project has finished up. And uh, thank you again to all of the participants. We've gotten a lot of amazing work and uh, you know, just innovation done in such a short time. Uh, we also had a couple of the participants, uh, Diraj and Vihan, were able to submit blog posts about their uh, experience and what they were able to do. Uh, so uh, kudos and thank you again to them for uh, being able to share that with the community as well. Um, another thing that just got published last week was uh, the new uh, Jenkins monthly newsletter. Uh, ideally, we're going to have it coming out at the beginning of the next month to just do a quick retrospective on all the uh, things that we were able to accomplish in the previous month. Uh, so that includes all the different SIG officers, that includes um, events, that, that anything that might apply to Jenkins. That's going to be uh, an update on there, which is great. Uh, and hopefully we'll have tons, well, I know we're going to have tons of Hectoberfest news to share on the next edition. So uh, it'll just be a matter of what else on, in addition to that. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, Sorry for interrupting, but um, yeah. if you who are watching the video uh, wonder, hey, I haven't received the newsletter in my mailbox. That's perfectly normal. It's a newsletter that won't be sent by email. It will just be a blog post on Jenkins.io. That's why. Yes, this is actually a great point, Bruno. Uh, the newsletter is not a newsletter in a literal sense in this case, but it is something that we're going to be posting to the Jenkins community blog. So uh, it's always available here. Uh, and we will be tweeting and sending out other notifications throughout our social channels. Um, it's just a matter of making sure uh, everyone's here to do that. So. Yeah. Uh, Keep your eyes posted. We'll, there will be further additions. And uh, yeah, if there's any uh, ideas or suggestions anyone might have or want to know more, uh, please, by all means, uh, share that with us. The community discourse is always open. And uh, anything that we can do to you know, make this more informative or uh, make it a, a better resource for folks, uh, that's, that's the idea. Um, cool. Uh, anything else on that one, uh, Bruno? Oh, I just want to make sure. I thank you, Gary. Anything. Yeah, no worries. Uh, and then uh, the next action item is I have created a blog post announcing the new Jenkins Governance Board elections. The, when that is published, uh, everything will be opening. So voter registration and, nom and candidate nomination periods will be open from uh, today until November 10th and 17th, respectively. Uh, but uh, there's, once that's posted, I'll make sure to update the agenda here with the link to it. And again, that is something that we'll be discussing and sharing out on our social channels, um, the community discourse, uh, and any meeting that we have for the Jenkins community will uh, undoubtedly bring it up at some point, I'm sure. Um, okay. Big thank you to Damien uh, DePortal for partnering up and helping oversee the elections this year. Uh, wouldn't have been able to create this without him. So. Uh, big, big thanks to um, all the work that's gone into this. Um, this is not a trap, Kevin. I just wanted to know if we could talk about the rules for being elected or being able to vote for someone. Uh, do we have any prerequisites for that? Yes, absolutely. Um, so 
uh, what we have is uh, someone, uh, you have to have made a contribution to Jenkins in some way, shape or form by September 1st this year. Uh, now, the nice thing is there are several different ways to contribute to Jenkins. Uh, it doesn't have to be a pull request updating something. It could be helping someone in the community. It could be translations for different languages. Uh, it can be any sort of review for existing pull requests. There are several different ways to contribute and participate with Jenkins. Since there are so many ways, and since within those ways, there are even more ways to actually uh, participate, we don't have a way to accurately measure each contribution. So uh, on our system, we're trusting everyone that signs up and registers to vote does have at least one, um, but there is no uh, concrete hard and fast rule to say you need to have X, Y, or Z uh, to show off or showcase before you can register to vote. I see. Uh, but if you made it, you know it. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, the idea is that the uh, users who want to participate in the election, uh, you know, are, uh, have some vested interest in the Jenkins as a project, the community, etc. So, um, you know, obviously, we're open to anyone, anyone can be involved. Uh, but we just ask that we have there is an account with the Jenkins community. And that you have tried at least tried to contribute. Um, again, any help is wonderful and accepted. It doesn't have to necessarily uh, fix everything or anything, but um, the fact that you care enough to help Jenkins users and the Jenkins community uh, is everything that we need. Got it. Thank you, Kevin. Hello and welcome, Pam. And speaking <laughs> of people contributing to Jenkins, Pam made tons of work last week's um, in regards to October phase that we'll address later on in the meeting. So mm -hmm. welcome, hello, and congrats. All right, thanks, thanks. Uh, it was with the help from Mark, I will tell you that. So he <laughs> he kind of held my hand on the first few and then he went on vacation. So I tried to do a couple on my own, so. And now you know how uh, I've been feeling, Pam. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank well, Mark, a few other people. Mark is very, very helpful, I will say. <laughs> Yes, Mark is very helpful indeed, especially when it comes to getting started with these things. It's a mm -hmm. uh, game changer, but yes. Yeah. But uh, I digress. So uh, yeah, contributions are always welcome. Uh, the blog post will have more information about contributions, how to contribute, what you can do to contribute. Um, and it does explain a little bit further that because there's no way to measure these accurately against each other, that we're just excited for all the assistance. So um, great question, Bruno. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, and yeah, like I said, there will, there will be a lot more information available once the blog post is published. Um, it has all the deadlines for uh, the different phases of the election. It has uh, some great info about uh, the election process itself and what we use for that that process and uh, just gives it just sets up expectations for uh, what's going to happen uh, before during and after the election itself so um, yeah that'll be available in the Jenkins blog later today uh, if not already yeah thanks a lot for writing that blog post uh, really helpful of course yeah and uh, it has been vetted by uh, several community members so uh, thank, I'm not just going rogue or anything so, cool. All right. Uh, uh, next item I have here is DevOps World 2022. Uh, so it had been postponed due to Hurricane Ian affecting Florida. Uh, and unfortunately, that just didn't happen. Uh, however, we have rescheduled, we have uh, persisted and, and risen from the ashes. Uh, and DevOps World 2022 will now be online and held on November 9th this year. Uh, so there are uh, different timeframes, depending on where you're based in the world. And uh, so this makes it really accessible to everyone, as opposed to just having a singular time period that, you know, we try to get everyone in. Um, this has just taken it to another level. Uh, anyone who had signed up for the initial DevOps world will automatically have access for this. Uh, and uh, yeah, so here the EMEA and APAC timeframes, 12 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Uh, CT and Americas have 12 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. and 9 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Or that's the same time frame, it's just Eastern Pacific. So yeah, two time frames. But, uh, but DevOps World 2022 is gonna be online. It's gonna have a different format. There will be smaller sessions and, or um, there will be 
things broken out a little differently, uh, but a lot of the speakers are still going to be present and a lot of the same um, discussions, topics, exhibits, etc. will be happening. Uh, the contributor summit that we were going to hold just before DevOps World is still being planned and rescheduled. Um, it's going to be in an online format and what will probably end up happening is it'll be broken up into a few different sessions so that we can uh, go through the process of uh, modernizing, adopting, and uh, contributing to a plugin, uh, but in a way that is more um, respectful to the person who's working with us on that. So uh, more details will come from that and we'll be able to share more, uh, most likely in November, once we have the plannings uh, going. Uh, next item on the agenda is we have the November LTS coming up. Uh, so that will be 2.361.3. Uh, it is set right now for a November 2nd release date. And Alex Brandes has been so kind as to be the release lead for it. Uh, the change log and upgrade guide have been uh, created and added to the LTS checklist pull request. So uh, that is available for review. Uh, I know that I saw Alex already able to comment on it, review it a little bit himself. So any other feedback is appreciated. And um, oh, I'll make sure to update that link as well so uh, that that's there for everyone. Uh, we'll have the upcoming weekly release of 2.375 next week on Tuesday. Uh, so the change login upgrade guide will get reviewed on Monday and make sure that there's nothing uh, inaccurate on there and updated once that's merged. Uh, and then just yesterday, we also had a plugin security release, but this is not a version release, so uh, it is not. Uh, part of the weekly line, but it is something that happened yesterday. Uh, I forget exactly, but I want to say it's 20 or so plugins that were affected. And so, um, but everything was updated and an email was sent out as well. Uh, so if you're curious, there should be some sort of notification um, available. Uh, and last thing on the agenda I have today is Hacktoberfest 2022. Uh, we're in full swing now. We're in, in the roughly third week of October, yep. and uh, it's really ramping up. This is incredible. We've got uh, almost 400 pull requests submitted. Almost uh, there's 336 that have been accepted and merged. So that's that's just an incredibly high percentage. Kudos and thank you to everyone for for all of that. Uh, and this has come from 90 distinct contributors with. Uh, 75 getting accepted merged PRs like overall uh, documentation. It's, a, it's obviously a little lower since things are broken up, uh, but this is incredible, incredible work that has been um, just provided to Jenkins from uh, new users, old users, any users, it doesn't matter. You know, again, all contributions are welcome. So uh, just seeing this uh, makes my heart swell up a little bit like the Grinch though. Um, it's great having so many people want to get in on it and help to make it better. And uh, it's fun. <laughs> it's really fun, yeah. And, I, and I'm getting to connect with a lot of people I haven't before. Hmm. We're getting to build the community further. Uh, and it's become a really great introduction for folks that maybe aren't used to Jenkins whatsoever to take a step in and get familiar with it. Um, I know several of the documentation contributors have not necessarily used Jenkins before and are just getting started uh, and to have them just dig right in and start submitting updates for different documents or pages is uh, unreal, frankly, for me. So yeah. uh, just uh, again, huge, 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 huge thank you to every one of our Hacktoberfest participants. Uh, your efforts are uh, more than appreciated. I can't even uh, figure out what to say for that. So yeah, thanks. Um, the uh, other thing that I wanted to mention here is that we do have a live stream every week for Hacktoberfest uh, held on Tuesdays that is hosted by Jean-Marc and uh, Messlin. They're in Bob. I, They're in, yeah, and sorry. Der no, yeah, I was just trying to remember. Oh, I thought name, you were Bob searching for Darren. Of course not. You weren't searching for Darren Pop, which is a rock star. You were searching for Jean-Marc Messlin, which who will yes. become a rock star in a few weeks after Hacktoberfest. <laughs> I mean, he's already a rock star in my eyes for You're all right. of this work. But uh, yeah, no, um, Darren and John Mark are hosting the live stream every Tuesday to go over Hacktoberfest, answer questions, 
uh, just to tell, review and recap all the progress made thus far. Uh, it's a great time, great place. It's on YouTube, so you can always check it out after the fact. I know people are always busy, including myself. So uh, it's there for your benefit. But uh, if you can't make it, you can't make it. We have it uploaded to our YouTube for you. So you can never miss out on the fun. Uh, and as the last part of the Hacktoberfest topic and uh, what I wanted to dedicate the most time to the meeting uh, is if anyone has questions, concerns, ideas, uh, anything at all about the Hacktoberfest work they've been doing, I'm more than happy to have an open forum, discuss, answer anything I can, uh, and worst case scenario, put you point you in the right direction if I can't answer it. Um, don't have a really question, but maybe a remark. I think we already got that conversation, you and I, a few weeks ago. Um, translating documentation is still documentation, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I got a um, notification from Crowdin uh, yesterday, I think, uh, which was telling me that one of the nine plugins uh, which are registered with Crowdin uh, needed new translation. So if you never tried crowding um it's really a nice ui and nice ux by the way uh, to translate jenkins documentation plugins uh documentation for jenkins plugin to internationalize it and even i uh do it in a, on a regular basis just for french because i'm a french speaker as you may not have guessed by my terrible accent uh, but if you know any other language than english please have a look at crowding it's pretty simple to get registered and start working with that. I think this should be counted as Oktoberfest, but I don't know how, but for Oktoberfest, if you write a blog post, if you make a video, if you give a talk at a conference, if you make some translation, this counts as a valid participation. But I don't know how you should declare yourself having made a translation by using crowding, but yeah, that should work, I guess. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, thank you very much. I forgot uh, about Crowden for a second, even though we had it on so many editions of the Docs Office Hours. But uh, Crowden is great for the translations, just like Bruno mentioned. Uh, it's also somewhat community um, sourced in terms of people submit the translations and you can kind of approve or um, yeah. say, reject yes, or, like, yeah. yeah, you can approve or reject the translations themselves to help make sure that they're correct. So. Uh, even if you're not doing the translation yourself, if you review a translation, that's still a huge help. Um, and is again, just another way to participate and, and contribute to Jenkins. So uh, the crowding experience is very nice, though, I will say from everything I've seen and, and tried out myself, it's a very simple, clean UI. It allows you to see multiple suggestions for the translations as well. So uh, you don't have to be 100% accurate. You can use those to work from as well. Um, as far as the recognition goes, though, Bruno, I think there's still a question mark on that part um, mm -hmm. because it is going through Crowden and not necessarily submitted as a pull request normally. Yeah. Um, but I believe that is one of the uh, topics that we have in the Hacktoberfest uh, committee, I guess. I'd say. So I, I know that uh, there's at least one person that's been working on that or, or looking into that specifically. So. Um, I, they may have more information. I'll make a note to grab that and check in with them for sure. Thank you. And if mm -hmm. you're a plugin maintainer and you have not yet switched to Crowdin, the process is pretty easy. So don't hesitate to get in touch with us if ever we could help you migrate your plugin to Crowdin. I will do the French part, I promise. <laughs> I wish I was more useful in this case, but my French, my French skills, I think, would be offensive at this point, since oh, considering how much I forgot. <laughs> But yeah, cool. Um, Pam, uh, I, again, thank you for joining up. Did you have any questions or anything you'd like to um, share about Hacktoberfest or anything at all? No, I mean, I've, I, it was, I have blocked off my calendar. It was, uh, like you said, it was fun. It was fun to get into doing um, something and I did learn a lot. So just how the repositories were set up and everything, since I'm very new to Jenkins as a whole. So, okay. Thank you. Uh, I don't yeah. want you to share a secret if you don't want to, but are you going to get your T-shirt? Um, I think so. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. congrats. 
<laughs> yeah, we'll see. I, I have a couple more. Um, I've been trying to block off um, at least a couple hours on Friday to be able to participate. So nice. That's awesome. Well done. Okay, Pam. Congrats. Thanks for all the, oh, yeah, thanks for everything that you put in there. Um, and Bruno touched on a really uh, specific piece of information that I don't know if we talked about, but anyone who participates in Hacktoberfests and gets four or more pull requests merge does get a t shirt or a tree planted in your name. So you can either be stylish or <laughs> have some conservation in your life. Either way, I think it's a really good opportunity to participate and uh, at least uh, show off a little bit. Yeah, and even if you don't read the four plus pull request accepted and merge, uh, you already have the adrenaline boost, you know, each time you get one PR merge and people happy clapping and saying, yeah, your code, it's part of Jenkins now, you're famous or not, but you enjoyed it. nonetheless. <laughs> that's how it plays out in my head for sure so uh, i definitely agree there and, uh, that little yeah that adrenaline rush of uh getting it merged is fun uh it's a, it's a little yeah it's nice a little dopamine rush <laughs> great um oh uh that looks like the end of our agenda today uh did anyone have any other topics they'd like to throw on there share if not no worries uh, yeah, thanks Thank for the update. Much. Of course. Thank you very much, Pam, Bye. for being here and uh, sharing. Thank you as well, Bruno. You're welcome. OK, uh, I'm going right to stop there. the recording now. It'll be ready in 24, 48 hours, uh, maybe a little longer. But uh, we'll get that figured out and uploaded as soon as it's available.